Hey guys, suck it. I want to give a final update on the Space Lara character for now. I've gone up to 89. I did start pushing it to 90, but then the sort of usual build fatigue sort of kicked in. Um, as far as red maps, what have I been up to? I haven't really been progressing on the Atlas too far. I've mostly just been bouncing around this little section of Chateaus, Krem, Wasteland, Shake Promenades, Sulphur Wastes, and Volcanoes. Bouncing in and outs of, you know, get up to 14s, drop down to 11, get up to 14s, drop back down, have to run some 10s. Oh look, I've run out of chisels, so on and so forth. And I've basically run all of my chisels and out dries, and I'm at that point where I need to reinvest into getting more mapping currency to let me continue further. And I feel like here is where I'm going to put down the character. So with that in mind, I want to talk over the strengths, weaknesses of the build, what map mods to avoid, where I'd recommend gearing, what gearing pieces to avoid, so on and so forth. So right off, we'll start with map mods. For map mods, I feel safe running everything except for Elemental Reflect, obviously, because if you run Elemental Reflect, you will kill yourself. Again, you do not need to be a Elementus, you do not need to run Purity of Fire, you can handle single Reflect mobs perfectly fine with this setup, especially when you get up to just under 8k life, it really is annoying. Um, around about, I would say 6.5 to 7k plus, once you've gotten between you know 6.5 to 7k, you don't need to worry about having a life leech on gear. Until that point, I would sort of recommend it. The thing is, is you have so much regen and such a high natural life pool, that it's incredibly difficult to kill yourself to reflect and really the only way you can kill yourself to reflect is allies cannot die or attacking into reflect as something is about to kill you it is incredibly difficult with that low health pool and the second you get over 7k definitely it's safe to go without it um for my aoe setup i was using explosive area fire pen gmp increased area effect restoration so, you know, I was running increased air effects of Life Leech and complete, complete fine. Don't have Life Leech on my single target. Don't have any Leech on Flask since I dropped these zeros. No problem. So, Elemental Reflect and no regen. No regen, you can run it. Running it is a pain. It is just frustrating. Um, vulnerability, fine. Double damage mods, fine. Triple damage mods, fine. You have the HP, you have the block, you have the layers of mitigation, fine. No regen, you can do it. Use two health flasks, it's just a pain. You'll notice that I did drop the Forbidden Taste in the end. Ultimately, I prefer the Forbidden Taste to a normal Seething. And if you don't know Forbidden Taste, what it does is it's a unique Quartz Flask. It consumes 45 of 60 charges on use. It heals you for 75% of your maximum HP. But you then take 8% of your maximum health as Chaos Damage for the duration of the Flask, which by default is 4 seconds. Now, as you can see, my character is 63% positive Chaos Resistance in Merciless and in Maps, and has a whopping 510 life regen per second. You can run the uh, Forbidden Taste Flask, no problem, in 60% less regen. Don't even notice it. You only notice it in Vulnerability and No Regen Maps, and if you're often running Trials or running a Lab, then it feels a little bit annoying because you only get one use. Um, you, most of the time you do get two uses of, out of it because we do run a reduced fast charges belt and as a pathfinder there is a 20% chance whenever you use fast that it doesn't consume charges and we have so much increased fast charges gained that it's like you use it, you kill one mob, you have another use of it. So the only times it feels bad is on vulnerability maps, no region maps and labs and trials. I kind of got bored of swapping in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. So for the last level, I tried just using a Seeding of Divine. Uh, the other reason why I did that is a lot of people won't be as extreme as I have with capping out the Chaos Res, so I just want to see how it felt not to use that. One other important thing to note, I still don't have my Uber Lab, even though I'm level 89. It's not that I'm afraid of Uber Azari, it's the game is bullshit and you need to do trials. Now, I did make the mistake of playing about one to two weeks in softcore. Um, if you remember, I started the league in hardcore, played for about two weeks, week, week and a half, and then I wanted to experiment with some wonder action in softcore, and then I bounced back to hardcore. Now, this is around about the time when I did an initial push at the start and had some friends that I could play with, and then I was like, yeah, no, peace, I'm going to go do other things. 
I generally don't like camping a global 820 or trade 820 to poach like other people's offerings. And because I took that off break and was playing entirely solo, I didn't get an opportunity to just like borrow someone else's key. And when I came back from playing Softcore, I thought, oh God, I've made this really annoying for myself because I could easily kill Azara myself, get people to boost me through Uber Azara, but he's finding this key. I wonder how long it would take for me to find the last trial. And I made a point of purposely not just going into a global channel to find it. Um, I still haven't got it yet. And I'm going to keep playing this league without getting the trial from someone else until I get it. It's the top right one I'm missing. I can't quite remember what it's called. But yeah, just an off topic thing. GGG, I feel like you might need to rework the system. Either have some sort of waiting so that once you've encountered one offering, the offerings you haven't yet done become more apparent. Maybe have some waiting with intelligent prophecies if it notices that you're missing just one or two trials. Maybe it's more likely to give you prophecies which will make trials spawn to maps. I don't know, it just seems like a stupid system. I also remember anecdotally that Yoji made a video um, about his solo Starfound hardcore experiences when he also came back from playing softcore. I think he made a note of how he had to do something stupid like 600 maps until he finally unlocked all of his trials so he could run his Uber Lab. So yeah, kind of off topic. As far as map mods go, the build feels completely fine. However, there are some cases where a series of map mods do particularly slow down this build. Now, a big portion of my damage comes from flammability, elemental weakness, and elemental equilibrium. Now, note I'm only on a level 19 explosive arrow, so I haven't got a level 21 yet, and I'm not doing stuff with, you know, a corrupted level 21 one. The whole thing with explosive arrow is it does a bunch of fire damage and then has a big juicy ignite. So you want to hit things hard, then put a hard ignite on them, and then the ignite whistles them down. Hexproof is annoying but by itself is manageable. Increased maximum life is annoying, but manageable. Enfeeble is annoying, but manageable. Elemental resistances are annoying, but manageable. Volcano map. I've run, I don't know why, but every volcano I've had has just RNG'd into like monster life, players are first with enfeeble, then like elemental resistances. The final boss of volcano is a fire totem dude who has really high elemental resistances and he's a totem so you can't curse him and then it's frustrating because he's a totem and I don't know why we can't curse totems but it's a totem you can't curse who already has like really high fire resistance and then you have enfeeble and you have max life and then blah 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 avoid that plethora of mods if possible but otherwise mapping you're completely fine if you know that you're going to be doing content which is, you know, ignite proof, like some stuff is just ignite immune, um, Argus, Itziri, um, Phoenix, I don't know why I struggle to come up with Phoenix, some bosses, whatever, then on your single target setup, drop the chance to ignite support gem and put in elemental focus. That will offset some of that damage, that's just one thing to keep in mind. And other than that, maps, it's exposed error, it's tried, it's tested, you'll be completely fine. You will not have any DPS issues with this build. Now, when it comes to what gear you want to get and what order you want to get it in, where I'm currently at, where I'm just sort of bouncing between red maps, trying to build a big pool and pushing up, you know, eventually going to kill some guardians, the main upgrades for me at this point would be getting some juicy opal rings. Opal rings have implicit 25% increased elemental damage, and then you want to use Essence of Anger, which is an Essence which crafts percentage fire damage on it. So pretend that this was like a good ring. It'd be 25% increased elemental damage. That scales the fire and it scales the ignite. So juicy double dipping action goes on there. And then like 30% fire damage. So you get like a 55% increased damage ring just off the bat. Then throw on some high max life, some stacked resists, and then something to proc, you know, my EE. Now... I am using Combs Heart. Without it, I've got 6.3k HP. You don't need Combs Heart to make Exposed Arrow work. So without a chest piece at all, level 89, 6.3k HP. You can easily still get up to, you know, 6.5 to 7k HP without it, just using any rare of your choice. If you want to do stuff with Queen of the Forest, if you want to just be lazy, use a Carcass Jack for 
quality of life mapping, so on and so forth, you can do it. It is a very nice quality of life. It does give you some fire damage. You're probably not going to get more than like a 30% roll without spending a lot of currency. I paid 145 chaos, I would say, for this in hardcore with the chaos corruption on that. Generally speaking, combs, the like set price is about 130 chaos just for a combs. If you're lucky, you can snipe them for like 100 C. That's basically you've made a snipe and people are flipping. People do this thing where they buy and flip, buy and flip. They buy them for like 120, 130, relist them for 150, 160. In this league, at least this far in, you probably don't get one for less than about 130-ish. Don't worry too much about getting the max fire damage roll. It is exposed for really do enough damage. You're much better off this currency. You would save from going from a 30 to a 40% or a 50% increased fire damage. If you spent that crafting opal rings, you would get the damage back instantly and be a much more efficient use of your currency. So, yeah. The main thing that you really want to be looking for, just completely off the bat, is getting a decent rearguard roomies combo going. Um, at least in hardcore at the moment, you can get a decent rearguard. By that I mean a hide roll block chance spell block for about 3 to 5 chaos, and you can get the roomies. I think I paid 20 for this. Now, for like a 25 chaos package, you're going to get more defense using just a rare chest or a perfect form or whatever than you will from going for the combs heart. So from a hardcore defensive perspective, this would be the first like big investment. Assuming you already have a quill rain. The quill rain would obviously be the first thing you buy, but assuming you already have that, this would be the next thing to go for. At that point, just pick up whatever rares. All of my stuff is just has life, has life, has resists. I made a point of getting like super overcat on like these three pieces. The fact they have really nice stacked resistance on there, meaning that my jewelry isn't a big source of resistances. Now, the reason why this is important is as I was saying about the essence thing, your end game is to basically invest all of your currency into getting the most damage you can on your jewelry. So if you can have all of your resistances covered by your rare helm, gloves, belt and boots, which is very, very easy to do. You can then luck out a lot more with essence crafts if you're doing it yourself or when it comes to buying other people's crafts. You know, if people see a ring with only like one resistance or a low like 20% lightning res, then they're going to price it a lot cheaper and that's a big thing. Um, when it comes to a dying sun, for the love of God, you do not need a dying sun to play this build. You really don't need it. You just don't. You don't need it. Um, I feel safe enough now that while a Taste of Hate would be very nice and would certainly be an upgrade to a Basalt Flask, I would probably focus on getting at least one or two high DPS Opal Rings before I saved up the currency to buy a Taste of Hate. I feel like the way with Pathfinder is you only really need like one juicy unique flask or you don't even need unique flask. Just having a basalt with pathfinder is good enough. But you only really need like one super flask, which benefits to justify you being a pathfinder. And then you can focus on the rest of your gear. What a lot of people do is they like panic with certain ascendancies and they default choice into certain building options. Focus on your flasks at the end. That's when it comes to uniques. The main core thing you want to do is run alchemist on anything which isn't a unique flask. Alchemist Quicksilver Adrenaline is amazing. You go from 32% movement speed to 160% movement speed, and that's not a perfect roll. This costs me, I believe, 4 Chaos. It's cheaper than spam alterations yourself. You can spam alteration yourself, but most times you're better off just buying it straight off Peewee Trade. My increased effect Alchemist, again, keep in mind that RNG is a cruel mistress, and I'm still missing some flask effect, and flask effect is very, very important. I go up to 85% max fire resistance. With that extra node, I believe I'd be 86% max fire resistance. That's why Reflect really isn't an issue. It just isn't. We have such a high HP ball buffer that you're fast, which you're always active. When they're up, you just don't take damage. Um, it's another reason why Taste of Hate is so good. You won't get as much because it won't be an Alchemist Taste of Hate, for example, but you'll be pushing about 83 um, 82, 83% max um, cold resistance. 
very nice in breaches. Having these elemental based flasks in breach league is beautiful. And it makes running just a ruby flask by itself very rewarding. That was one of the things which I liked about being a Pathfinder is Explosifier is a build where you kind of want to run a ruby flask anyway, especially if you're not running purity. And it's just you're rewarded for, you know, using that safety net with Pathfinder because it just scales oh so much harder. And yeah, um, that's basically the gearing, really. The whole chaos resistance thing, I feel like it's worth, especially in Breach League where you do get the random chaos breaches. They are incredibly rare. You know, people on Reddit joke about only having one or two an entire league. But when they do randomly pop up and you get the purple splatters going everywhere, and especially if you're running stuff like Chula herself, um, or himself, or whatever it is, you really want to have positive chaos res. 63% is kind of overkill. Uh, I feel like the difference between going from 50% to 75% isn't that noticeable unless you're doing some extreme chaos damage stuff. In most cases, if you have about 20 to 30% positive chaos resistance, you'll have a very noticeable survivability increase against a lot of damage. Just stuff like when you see desecrated ground on some maps and you just like AFK in it and you don't even notice it, you just nullify a lot of map mods. Um, it's like, oh god, alchemist, oh, tight, oh, and you're like, oh, it doesn't do anything. There are a lot of builds which would normally struggle. The combination of high life regen and just high overall resistances make so many mechanics which aren't one-shot mechanics, just not even a mechanic. They just kind of cease to exist. That being said, this build has done a very good job of making me feel bad about life builds. Um... At the start of the league, my like minimal life threshold of like this is the threshold that all builds must have if you're a evasion or like avoidance based archer was about 5.5k. 5.5k was kind of like, like, yeah, you feel safe. And then it's creeped up a bit. I then had my 6k life slayer, which had 30k armor and it had dodge, it had spell dodge. And it was cool, and it had super leech, and I was like, this is a really tanky character. And I think I had 6.2k HP, and I just got one shot, and I was like... Okay, okay, okay. So then I've been running around with, like, 8k HP. It really annoys me that I'm 24 off, but anyway. Since I've been running around with, you know, I think 7.5k, once you get to about 7.5k life, Unless you're running really rippy maps, like stupidly rippy maps, or purposely face tanking stuff that you know you shouldn't face tank, you feel like you're sort of safe. Generally, the biggest hits you're going to take are about 7-ish K. It's very rare you're going to get clean, like, one shot above 7K. It happens. Um, Tunnel Trap did manage to hit me for about 7.1, I think. I really wish I was recording it. It was... Like, I think it was dual flat damage, and it was a ghosted tunnel trap, and tunnel trap is tunnel trap, and sometimes just kind of goes... Pfft. I don't know if I got hit by two projectiles, I don't know what happened, but it was just like, I was walking through a mud geyser, then I saw a ghost, I saw tunnel trap, and then I saw my health do bajunk, and luckily I was using forbidden taste, so it went back to bajunk, and then I blinked Harry off screen, and was like, I think I'm going to avoid that guy. But yes, this is explosive arrow. If you guys have any questions um, about it, then let me know. I'm probably going to play this character a little bit more just to build up some currency to fund my next build, which I'm going to cover in a separate video tomorrow. For a little teaser for anyone who's wondering, it is a bow build. And it uses... Gladiator. Yeah. I had to put that pause in. You can all try and sit and work out what is not like gladiator. He knows that's not assassin, right? Like he doesn't mean slayer. He probably means champion. He means champion. He means gladiator. He's no. He's just bad at assassin. He's bad at the game. He's bad. At the game. But anyway, hope you all have a good day. Have fun trying to work out what my build is, and yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow.